Hey guys, VBAT here with another V plays. And a while ago, somebody asked me, Hey, can you show me how to fly the Su 9? I'm having trouble with it. So do I. <laughs> I've been messing with this thing all night long, trying different builds. I think I might have found a good one. We'll talk about how I make it work, but I'm probably going to have to really focus up to do well in this match. We do have another human on the enemy team for once. Yay. So he's actually going to be flying the ME 209 Alpha, which is kind of my kryptonite. An altitude fighter is going to have the speed and maneuverability to be able to take me on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and F2 this thing. We are a true multi role. We should be playing on the periphery, going after the defense aircraft going after ground targets. We are carrying the bombs, and I'll explain more as to why I am doing that. But they have a really long reload, and they're a pain in the butt. Uh, let's see if we can get a cheeky shot on these guys. We have a really long-range cannon, but it's not 100%. He says as he gets a big old hit. The less I rely on this gun, the more it seems to treat me well like that. Slamming on the brakes, this aircraft gets air brakes, and it really helps it get on these aircraft. The 23s are pretty good on this plane. There we go. Let's nose up, let this guy kind of chase us a little bit. We're going to rudder over, hit the boost, and we're going to let him kind of slide past us here. It looks like the bombers are inbound on our position. Hit the boost again. Got him. And now if I could just take out one ground target, we'd be able to secure this, but I'm worried those bombers are going to sneak it. Nope, they didn't. We're going to go after a bomber. You probably already noticed, guys, that I have a maneuverability build, and you might be wondering, why are you doing that? It is non-traditional for me to want to do that with dirt planes like this, but we're going to keep working the periphery. We're going to go over to this site... Actually, you know what? We're going to go tussle in the middle. I'm going to go tussle in the middle because I want to go to their command center. This might be a mistake, but we're going to give it a shot. I see you, Yak9U. I'm your bigger brother. Hello. How are you? The air defense aircraft I can chew up pretty easily. You know, if I get the initial volley, that is. Um... Yeah, we got an ally on this guy. Nope. Got him. Got him. Rudder up, break on, hit the boost. This guy's all vectored for our friend. There we go. This is the human. He is looking at somebody else. That's my favorite target. Someone who's not looking at me. But the 23s do their work. We did not get the kill, but that's okay. Going after this ground attacker. Get those big old hits at range. That's always good. I see you, Seafang. You are a bigger priority for me. Got an assist. We got the big gun to hit. We got the big gun to hit again. We do have the advantage on the capture right now. That guy's going to be toast. Can I steal it from this spot? No. No. Yes. All right. Let's do something stupid here. Use the 23s, fire the big gun. It takes like two seconds for this thing to actually get to a point where you can fire. Because that's the rate of fire is really, really slow. But look at this. Are we going to take out their bomber flight? While our bomber flight grabs their command center? That's the goal. We got the kill. And we got the kill. Nice. Let's go back towards the middle. Normally you don't do that type of stuff. That was just kind of an opportunity. Opportunity I thought would be fun. Um, do not recommend going up against bombers. Do not recommend pointing your nose straight up. You will bleed speed. But you can use that to your advantage to be able to do kind of a rudder turn. 
We're going to hit the air brakes and the dive here. Because again, we do have air brakes. Oh, we got that big chunk and hit. There we go. That felt more like a Yak 9U, didn't it? I see you, Jawa. You can be trouble. Somebody else is on me. Hit the brakes. Hit the boost. Hit the brakes. Hit the boost. Oh boy, we lost the zone. If we can protect an ally, that's what I'm looking for. I just want to be able to get a kill. We got him! <laughs> Was that the human? No, no, it's not a human. That's a different guy. Jammo is our human. Uh, our bomber flight's doing work, but they must have taken out enough to be able to prevent us from capturing. But... There's another flight coming in, and it looks like their heavy is doing work against it. We just lost another aircraft in the zone. There's still enough structures where we might be able to grab it. But their bombers are heading towards our area. Trouble, trouble, trouble. I want to maintain the advantage. That's my goal. The aircraft likes to cruise at like over 300 miles an hour, which is nice. But now that they've got the center, their guys are going to start heading this way. We took out the bomber flight. But there's bombers inbound, so we'll do that. Oh, I see you, 2-2. Two, two. The there we go. Letting the 45 fly periodically, but then when you close the distance, you can let you can use a secondary gunfire button to be able to get the 23s on target. You can see how long it takes for this gun to like reset and fire again. Boom. Boom. Big hit. Big hit. Nice. The less I depend on it, the better it seems to do. It's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy here. Thank you for stopping for my gun. That was perfect. Winged Legend. Best game of the night. Best game of the night. Squall line. Dip the nose. You can actually get up to like 500 miles an hour. Nope. Didn't get it. Whoa. Hey, man. Hey, man. Come on. What are you doing? Air superiority, I almost hope that they get this site over here. Our guys picked up the mid, that's awesome. There's the human. He's gone forever. Oh, I said don't do this. Oh, we won. <laughs> okay, this is my second battle with this setup. Whoa, that guy's priority gone. This is my second battle with this setup. We wanted the full maneuverability build. Here's my logic. I was doing speed builds. I was doing speed builds all night. And I was just having a heck of a time getting this aircraft to work because you're so reliant on the 45 to hit and you can't really maintain chase to play with the 23s. And I'm like, man, the reason this plane sucks is the Yak-9U was such a great plane because it was so maneuverable and you could get into dogfights. It was... Not a dogfighter in the sense like uh, Zero would be or anything like that, but as far as multi-rolls went, it was great at being able to chunk away hit points really well, and it just felt good. It felt like a multi-roll and name only. It was more like a mid-altitude fighter with an all-or-nothing mentality with that big cannon. You almost had to hit with the 45 because you only get 95 damage per second per gun on the 220s that came with the Yak-9U. So it was great to be able to get the that 45 to hit and then a trit away the rest of the health with the 220s but you're talking about like what uh 180 damage per second not spectacular sorry it's 190 damage per second i'm sorry i'm doing public math here and it doesn't work so hot but with this plane these 223s are really good 23s you're looking at 140 damage per second per gun so 280 damage per second just from these two guns the 45 is only getting 150 damage per second. You only get a shot every other second. Now, bear in mind, with a shot every other second, that means technically you're doing 
300 damage per shot, which is why you get to see that big chunk damage. But you got to hit center mass if you want to get full damage potential. And you still have to deal with a survivability with aircraft's damage resistance. So you're not always going to get 300 damage. But it works great against air defense aircraft. Why did I go with the maneuverability build? Well, besides the things I just mentioned, being able to stay on target a little bit more. The thing that really got me is I kept setting up for a speed build and I go, man, if I specialize this thing, though, it wants me to use an air to ground ordinance. And I've been taking them off to get the speed back. And it's very all or nothing. And I always felt like I just never had any speed. I couldn't use everything to climb. I even had the upgraded engine on, which usually gives you better engine like hold speed. It holds the speed better. This plane doesn't hold speed. As soon as you kick the nose up, you start bleeding energy like a stuck pig. And if you hit the air brakes in the vertical, though, you can slow down really well. And I'm like, you know what? You could use that to your advantage. I mean, you've all seen my ground attack videos where I point the nose straight up and then I kick the rudder over and I essentially do a 180. That's a really good dogfighting technique as well, because it doesn't really matter that my turn time is an 11.6 with this setup and at base it's a 12.3 uh we want the full maneuverability suite you guys can see my pilot skills we are as maneuverable as we can get with the setup we have and it seems to do all right because now i feel like i actually can get into those tussles like the yak 9u like it's great to get that 45 to hit but it's still intermittent with a 9u but you get more opportunities because you can maneuver well now i'm more maneuverable and I get more opportunities. And those 23s do a lot of work. So I'm not as reliant on the 45 hitting, but when it hits, it feels pretty good. I'm not saying I, I like this plane, right? I don't like it, but I'm happy that I think I found a way to make this easier to fly. But it's heavily reliant on tricks. There's a giant vertical stabilizer on this thing. That's a, that's a pretty big vertical stabilizer. So you want to do that nose up, air brakes hit the rudder a lot of people don't have the rudder configured so i'm going to show you how to do that real quick you're going to hit your escape key you're going to hit settings you'll already be in controls by default you want to go and hit the flight button then you're going to click on yaw left and then you're going to hit your q key then you're going to click on yaw right and you're going to hit your e key then you're going to hit apply those I find to be the best ones because now all six of those keys, your WASD and now your Q and E are all right there where your fingers are going to be. You can hit the air brake, air brake and then also hit the Q or the E key to be able to fall over. You want to be vertical. You want to be able to fall over out of the target and then hammer the boost once you get the nose starting to turn over because then it kind of like kicks the tail over for you so you can get over a little bit quicker. And that's what we were doing there. And it seemed to work pretty well. You only do it so many times, but it works pretty well. So we essentially used its weakness, which was really bad climb, like a thing just bleeds its energy in the climb, to make it into a stall turning kind of multi-role dogfighter. Hopefully this works for you guys. I really hope it does. I also mentioned using a secondary key to be able to fire just your 23s. For those of you that have like a gaming mouse where it's got two buttons on the side, what I like to do is the for one that's further back I use for manual flaps, but then I have weapons group two set uh, to the forward button on the side. So you're gonna click on weapons group two. This will be the second highest caliber gun on your aircraft, and this will be true for all aircraft. I set it to that forward mouse button which is mouse button five for me if you don't have a mouse that's a gaming mouse that has that capability center mouse button you know you push down on the mouse wheel i don't know anybody who has a mouse these days that doesn't have a center mouse wheel that has a center mouse button so hopefully you've got that but that'll let you fire the 23s and not completely overheat the 45 every single time that you're going up against somebody i like to fire the 45 initially when i get into an engagement trying to get those shots at range but then I'll hit mouse button five and kind of let the 23s kind of pulse and do a little bit more damage and wait for the 45 to cool off. Then I hit the left mouse button to let a little bit of extra damage go out and knock away a bunch of hit points from the enemy. Again, potentially 300 damage in one volley, but it at least will give you some crits and stuff. So that's kind of nice. And that's the way I set that thing up. Uh, we'll go over the post game results. I probably should have done that first. Uh, yeah, 
14 9. Obviously, we got an extra thousand points because we stayed till the end of the battle. Uh, but we managed to take out. Oh my god, guys, we almost got an ace. I didn't even realize. It's 19 kills, 10 of which were against enemy aircraft. Oh, because we were killing bomber flights. We did kill four enemy attack aircraft. That, by the way, is the easiest way to get an ace is to kill bomber flights. Just for those of you who are trying to do a mission, you're going to want to hop into a heavy and just shoot down bomber flights begin. But even without those, you're still looking at 15 aerial kills. Not too shabby. Lots of multi-rolls easy to go after. We got a fighter, ground attacker. We killed two. We killed three bombers. Granted, they were Russians, so they came down to us. Don't try to do the chasey up high thing. Again, the plane just bleeds speed. Uh, the climb rate of 372, not that spectacular. Uh, quick comparison with this plane. 471 for the premium version, the I-260. Like even the Yak-9U uh, is 322. You're not getting much more with this plane. And the Yak-9U isn't really good at going up to altitude either. So don't think the Su-9 is going to be able to do it. It just isn't. So... Yeah, and then crits. I mean, the 45 obviously made contact. I mean, look at that poor Baka Wolf 190. <laughs> Just crippling that poor guy. I think we only took him out once, though. But this seems to be working, guys. This is what I'm doing. That's the tactic I'm using, and it seems to be going well. So hopefully this helps some of you get through this aircraft. And even if you still don't like flying this, good news. The I-211 and the I-215 are a lot of fun, really good dirt planes. Again, a little inconsistent, but you usually get like one or two shot kills. And the rate of fire on the I-211 is once every second instead of once every other second, like with the 45 on this. So you get a little bit more consistency. And the I-215 is just a monster. I mean, once you figure out the guns and the lead, it's just so much fun to instantly delete, especially the air defense aircraft, but also take on the ground attackers so far away that they can't even hit you with their tail gunners. Love it. We're still going to do the same type of tactic, work on the periphery, maybe dogfight a little bit, but that's not really your role. I think that this is, this is it. The I-215 and the I-211 are the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, I've been doing history a little bit, so I'll talk a little bit about the history of the Su-9. The Su-9 came about like shortly after the end of World War II. The Soviets obviously got a bunch of the uh, 262 engines. They started making some copies of their own and improving on those. We get like an improved version of one of those engines in this aircraft. Uh, but this was their answer. This was their, okay, can we make something like the 262? And this is what they came up with. It's very much more of a fighter body, uh, so you can see it's much skinnier fuselage, but the wings are almost identical to like a 262. The wings, the engines, it's almost like they took them right off of a 262, and maybe they even did, in order to make this plane. And the gun configuration is a little bit weird, but the Soviets really favored having weird gun combinations like this. It was almost like, okay, the 23s we'll use for doing strafing targets on light targets and the 45 to, you know, do top-down attacks on tanks and stuff or, you know, heavily fortified defensive positions, uh, maybe go after a bomber or something like that. Like, that's what this thing was built for is, you know, a little bit more multifaceted because the Soviets loved the P-39Q, the export variant of the Aero Cobra. Uh, they'll never admit to it, in public they've like altered their history to make it seem like they didn't but they really did like it uh because that 37 in the hub paid dividends when they were going up against uh, lightly armored enemies to do close air support uh the two bombs nothing to write home about um i don't know why they're even on here 180 second uh, respawn time but now that we're in maneuverability build who really cares because i'm not really worried about the speed I like that I can dip the nose and get over 500. So if you are in a tight spot up against like a really turny fighter, like maybe a J7W, and you're like, I need to get away from this guy, you can. This surprised me. This really did. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope it improves some of your gameplay. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.